Here's uh, Carson Wentz afterwards who says the Eagles are not panicking. They are not panicking despite being 0-2. We got to execute, plain and simple. We got to execute. You know, we, we executed some things very well today. Um, you know, I thought we had some some good movement up front, running the ball um, in our turbo type stuff, tempo, up tempo offense. Um, did some good things, just not enough. All right, now here's the Carson Wentz soundbite where he talked about the Eagles not panic. You know, at the end of the day, we, we had two turnovers, uh, excuse me, two interceptions and, and the fumble. Um, turning the ball over is really killing us the last two weeks. Those are things we know we can clean up. But other than that, uh, we truly feel that we're right there. We're just missing some things, timing of some things. Um, so we're not panicking. We, we know what we got to clean up, and we will. You know, we're obviously frustrated. You never want to start 0-2. You know, last week, the way we lost Washington um, and start 0-1, obviously not what we, what we want and not how we expect to finish ball games. And then today, um, coming out behind it again, not, not where you want to be, um, but we know that there's enough things through two games, off, offensively speaking, um, that we can put on the tape and know, all right, we're just we're right there. We're just missing some things. We're right there. Don't panic. We'll be okay. Um, and I've always had all the confidence in the world in our defense. Um, you know, things happen, but um, we're not panicking. We're, you know, we're excited to get back on. All right, you heard it there. We're not panicking. He kept repeating it, which tells you he is panicking. All right, so do you agree or disagree with Carson Wayne's sentiment, which he repeated multiple times there, that the Eagles should not panic? No, I am a panic first type of person, especially for Philadelphia. The Eagles have now lost to Washington and the Rams. Now, I think the Rams are going to be a little bit above average, a little bit above average. Washington That might be their only win when it's all said and done. Those are a couple of games, though. If you look at it from the Philadelphia side of things, fly, Eagles, fly, the assumption, you know what happens when you assume, they assumed the position that they were going to get off to a 2-0 start. And now they've been smacked in the face. And while it is early, right, it is early, this does qualify as the sky is a falling on top of the birds. And when you go into the bowels of Lincoln Financial Field, somewhere underneath that stadium, there's a panic button, and I do recommend hitting the panic button. It is the first time in the Doug Peterson era that the Eagles have gotten off to an 0-2 start. The last time Philly got off to an 0-2 start, the chipper, Chip Kelly, was the head coach, and he was fired after that season. Chip Kelly, done in Philly. After the 0-2 start, it's how the birds have gotten to this particular point, which causes you to want to hit the panic button, and you would be right to hit the panic button. 64 points allowed in two games. Do you think the Washington football club is going to finish in the upper half of offense in the NFL? Because I know I don't. I even have my doubts about the Rams. Now, the Rams are off to a very encouraging start, and Sean McVay is starting to get some of his luster back as an offensive genius and boy wonder, and he had lost that last year. But still, are the Rams a top-five offensive team in the NFL? They certainly look like it against Philadelphia, but it's it's the mistakes. It's the self-inflicted mistakes. There's six turnovers in the two games, 64 points allowed as we – Pointed out five of those turnovers from Carson Wentz, the guy that says, don't panic, don't panic, nothing to see here. The Eagles offense is only averaging 18 points per game. It's only two games. We only get 16 games in the NFL. The defensive breakdowns, and those are obviously cranked up to a higher degree because of the turnovers. You're putting more pressure on your defense, which wasn't great to start with, and you can see You don't need some football expert to tell you. Just basic football knowledge tells you that the Philadelphia Eagles are behind the eight ball right now. Now, secondly, Carson Wentz continues to be a riddle wrapped up in an enigma for the Eagles because you have the good and the bad. Carson Wentz had the longest active streak in the NFL with at least one passing touchdown in 20 straight games, coming into the game against the Rams. That obviously came to an end. Wentz did not have a touchdown pass in this game. It was the first game without a passing touchdown since back in November of 2018, a game at New Orleans. So far in 2020, Carson Wentz has not only been a quarterback, he has been a little shop of horrors for Philly. And you're only 12 and a half 
percent of the season in, right? 16 game season, two games is 12.5%. But not only, not only is Carson Wentz a quarterback, my God, the stats, he's completing less than 60% of his passes in a passers league. He's averaging six yards per attempt against the Washington and the Rams defense. Two touchdowns, four interceptions, no touchdowns in this last game against L.A., and a passer rating of 64.4. So not only the four interceptions, he's also lost a fumble. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like Baker Mayfield or Ryan Fitzpatrick. Baker Mayfield the last year or Ryan Fitzpatrick of any year. But here's the problem. Philadelphia, they are fully vested in the Carson Wentz stock. They have hitched their wagon, for better or worse, to Carson Wentz. And right now it's for worse. They gave him the contract. They handed him a $128 million deal, which includes that $16 million signing bonus uh, not that long ago. And Carson Wentz cap hit is going to skyrocket. It really hasn't even kicked in yet. It's going to skyrocket next year. Carson Wentz is locked up in the Delaware Valley through 2024. There is a potential escape clause after next season, the 2021 season. However, that would leave almost $25 million in dead cap money. And as I have learned in the last couple of months, the salary cap is ridiculous. It's, it only applies when you want it to apply. But I would say $25 million or $24.5 million in dead cap money would lead you to believe that Carson Wentz is going to be the Eagles quarterback come hell or high water until 2024. Now, the final thought here. We've heard it before. We repeat it again. Life comes at you fast in the NFL. Historically, if you look at all the teams going back to 1978, that's the point of demarcation. There have been 321 football clubs that have started 0-2 since they went to the 16-game schedule in 1978. And of those 321, less than 12% have turned it around and made the playoffs. 36 out of 321 teams have gotten off to an 0-2 start. So that means not only the Eagles here, also the Minnesota Vikings and all the other teams that are off to the 0-2 start. Now, the only caveat here, while I am certainly bashing and, and I'm teeing off on Philadelphia, the one saving grace here for the Philadelphia Eagles is as they say in real estate, location, location, location. While the Eagles are terrible right now and Carson Wentz, he doesn't know what's front, what's back, what's sideways, what's up, what's down. He doesn't know any of that at this moment. Being Brenny Brightside, it's all about location. The NFC East is a dog food type of division. You can be 7-9 and nine and win the division. The Cowboys needed a miracle to beat the lowly Atlanta Falcons. And if the Falcons had any kind of coaching and any kind of smarts on special teams, the Cowboys don't complete the comeback, but ifs and buts were candy nuts. And at 1-1, one and one, Dallas is tied with Washington for first place, and the Eagles and Giants are 0-2, and, and they are the other half of the NFC least. And next week, the Eagles play host to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. That is a game you would suspect that Philadelphia will be able to win. However, the Bengals have shown they have some offensive pedigree there, so they will be able to move the ball. Their defense is horrible. If Carson Wentz goes out and pukes all over the field against Cincinnati, then you might as well call the Bears up and trade for Nick Foles at that particular point because I guess that's all you can do. What else can you do? Uh, If you go out and lose to Cincinnati – They better win that game because after that, the Eagles have the 49ers. Even the 49er backups will be able to beat Philly. They have the Steelers on the road, and they host the Ravens. So not exactly a fortuitous schedule for Philadelphia. 